Hi, this is Max. Hey, Max. Max Hardcore. This is Rob and Slim, and we are on live right now. Okay, great. Uh, uh, thanks for having me on the show. No problem, Max. Thanks for coming on. You're an adult film star, and uh, from uh, you're in Hollywood, correct? Yes. How, how long have you been in the industry? I, I read 92. Is that when you started? Yeah, 92. Uh, was when I got uh, when I got role and I I met Bobby Hollander, a very nice uh, old timer from the East Coast, uh, and he uh, he ran LBO Video, and we got in connection with him because he uh, uh, we would buy videotapes from him and sell them in the Midwest, and uh, and I got the the idea that I didn't like living in the Midwest anymore, and Hollywood sounded a whole lot better uh so i came out here and uh, didn't intend to become an actor i thought well perhaps maybe uh we can do some directing or you know some lighting or camera work uh i didn't really know but uh it just uh, turned out that i was pretty good at uh, the acting department and also putting together the technical uh aspects of uh, making a production and uh, really had a good time uh, doing it. And uh, so here we are years later and uh, talking to uh, the infamous Rob and Slim. (laughs) And the infamous Max Hardcore. So I wanted to ask too, in those years since you started, how has the adult industry changed? Well, of course, back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, more features were made than uh, amateur or uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, uh, loops. You know, they um, they made more features. Uh, you know, the big studios back then were vivid, and uh, Russ Hampshire had a, had a big big outfit, and uh, and these guys really put together a lot of money in into their movies and uh uh and then it it got more as the as the price for the equipment came down more people got into the business and uh, they started making um the uh loops uh, they called them which were uh just a couple of minutes long up to six minutes long or seven minutes long that would go into the peep show booths. And sometimes they would cut down the, the big features to uh, accommodate it. And other times they would be made specifically as loops. Uh, and the reason for the time is uh, of about seven minutes is because that was the length of a reel of film. And, uh, that's all it would fit on the machine. Okay. So, uh, so it's it's changed from the big features, although some people still are. Yeah. And, and if I seem to be jumping around here a little bit, it's because there's a lot of ground to cover. Yes, but absolutely. Basi- yeah. Basically, put features uh, spawned the the peep shows, and the, the peep shows spawned the amateur what they called amateur videos and in in that regard it was usually an experienced guy a guy like tt boy or or peter north working with a brand new girl that was considered to be amateur and uh and and then they they became a little bit later uh they dubbed it um gonzo titles because it was you know, pretty much whatever, however you wanted to structure them. And a lot of people did interviews up front with the girls. And uh, that was an interesting thing to do mm. uh, if the girl had something to say. And uh, and then they'd get into it with the girl and uh, and and take it from there. And uh, and that's kind of the approach that I took. Uh, although I took a sidetrack and I went to work for uh, a big European company called Private. And that was uh, run by Berth Milton and out of Stockholm, Sweden. And we would make a lot of the uh, tropical 
videos. Uh, you know, we'd fly down to the islands and uh, of the Caribbean mainly, sometimes uh, the islands of the Mediterranean as well. Uh, uh, and we would make make movies there and, uh, you know, rent a whole beach or just, you know, sneak onto a beach and, and do it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we really had a lot of fun yeah. uh, making those movies. I was going to ask, too, were there things you were able to do in other countries that you weren't able to do in the States? Well, they're, they're certainly less uptight about nudity. And, you know, there's a lot more nude beaches over there in Europe. Yeah. You know, the girls... Typically, almost, on almost any beach you would go to, the girls would be able to go topless, and uh, so it wasn't a big it wasn't a big deal. I mean, you still couldn't fuck on the beach. Right. Yeah. you know that was a public beach that had a lot of people on it. But yeah. you know there were plenty of beaches that uh, were available to uh, to go to that were. Su- either private or semi-private, you know, difficult to get to. On a couple of occasions, we had to take uh, pontoon boats uh, to to reach the beach, uh, and then we'd pretty much shoot all day. And uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, And we shot down in Costa Rica. I shot Costa Rica Getaway uh, and uh, and several other ones down there. And... uh, it's a lot of fun, and they again, they don't really worry about uh, the nudity aspect of it. I mean, if he's, a girl wants to go totally nude on a beach, it's not a big deal, and it, and it shouldn't be. Yeah. It, it, uh, I, at least I don't think so. Gotcha. And what what did you do before you worked in porn? Well, I did a lot of things, as you can imagine. Uh, but the thing that the, the stepping stone to get me into porn was uh was uh working uh uh building out uh bookstores uh and video shops Mm. and we would we would build them out see i was an engineer uh back uh, that's what i was trained in and uh and I I got pretty good at organizing things and and building things. So whatever needed to get built, I we made and uh, and we were able to build a lot of sets and sound stages and studios and whatnot. And uh, and, and it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you, uh, we didn't have we never had the money that Hollywood has, of course, but. But we, I, I, I'd like to think that we had more fun. <laughs> Absolutely. I was going to ask too. What's uh, what's been one of your favorite people that you worked with over the years? Uh, as far as the girls yeah. are concerned, uh, I, I'd have to say, uh, in no particular order, Layla Rivera, and then there was Chloe Adams and uh, Kitty Young. Uh, that's going back a few years. Uh, Molly, uh, I don't think she had a last last name. And uh, uh, who else? Oh, Asia. Asia, I, I'm working on right now. A uh, movie by, with Asia in it. And uh, uh, just a lot of nice girls got into the business because... It, it, uh, they they wanted to do it. They want to do it. They want to be models, and they they love being the center of attention. And it's just and it's just a lot of fun. And and uh, some uh, other girls I worked with, um, uh, Sierra Sin. Um, oh, and let's not forget about Bar- the lovely Barbie Angel. She was really my first contract girl. A uh, tiny little thing from Louisiana, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, uh, the girls got into it because they want to get into it. They weren't, like, dragged into it. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's the case with, with that. Like, yeah, girls do want to do that, too. Oh, yeah. a- a- absolutely. You know, uh, they 
they want to they want to well first of all they have to fuck i mean they're at that that age that they uh and can i say words like that on uh, yeah of course absolutely (laughs) okay all right uh the you know the girls want to have sex when they're uh when they're that age you know they're at a breeding age and then so it comes natural to them and then to do it and get paid for it is uh is a real bonus and then they're treated well too that uh for the most part uh they're uh, well paid they get paid uh like a thousand dollars a day um at at, uh, you know right when you get into the business and uh and from there um they can work uh you know 20 days a week a month if they will if they like and uh, that that's a lot of scratch for, you, uh, for a young woman. Have you ever had a girl that, like, of... after, uh, I don't know, a couple of movies, just decide she didn't want to do it anymore? Uh, not too many of them. Most of them did it until the work dried up. And okay. then... Uh, and then they moved on. Or they just got bored with it. Um, very few of them that I that I knew personally would get start into the movies and then quit right away. You know, sometimes they had bad experiences. Uh, you know, it, it's, you never know when you're dealing with other people, how they're going to react to, uh, and, and, and things, it's a pressure cooker when you're, when you're on set, you know, everybody's on the clock. You know, we want to get, we've got, uh, you know, eight hours maybe to shoot three scenes, and if that sounds yeah. like a lot, it's not. You could easily spend eight hours doing one setup and uh, front end, and uh, so it's it's really jammed. And so sometimes uh, feelings get hurt. Uh, but uh, after a little bit of experience, the girls get. Either they get into the groove or they move on. You know, they decide right. it's not for them. Yeah. And and with it being a job, does it ever get to the point where it's just not fun anymore or just monotonous? Only, yeah, well, only what, to me, it's always interesting. Uh, the only time it's not fun, of course, is you're, if, you're, if I'm working with somebody who doesn't want to be there, doesn't want to put in the effort, and really would rather be someplace else and Uh, and just is basically lazy (laughs) and i've met a few girls that just they just put forth no effort uh, at all they they just it's frustrating and difficult and those are not my better days those (laughs) are not the days that i remember in fact i've forgot most of them <laughs> I, I remember the days that were laughing and joking on the set and and when people see my movies they think well you know it looks pretty damn hardcore you know uh don't the girls uh mind uh you know don't they object to this kind of objectification and treatment and so forth i said no, the the good ones, the smart ones, know what the game is, and they know that they're entertainers. That's ultimately what we are, and we go on whether we're feeling good or we're feeling bad. We get on with the damn show, and and our job is to entertain the people at home. Do you guys and, when you before you go on, like do you do you talk about yeah. what's going to happen? Like, does everybody know the game plan? Well, yeah, it is to to uh, some degree. Like with brand new girls, you can explain things to them, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to really understand. You don't know what they understand, mm. what 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 you're really getting through. I mean, when I'm talking to a a girl who's uh, 19 years old, and I'm explaining it, most will get it, but some will not, and they. They just don't know. You can talk about it, but you really have to get in there and do it. Mm-hmm. And and some girls um, just don't get it. You know, just like some people that you hire for a job just don't get it. Yeah. 
and you can explain it to them till you're blue in the face and it doesn't do you any good. But fortunately, I'm happy to say that most girls uh, understand what it is. It's almost pre I. I, I, it's like a joke that we have. It's that they're pre-programmed for porn. They 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 understand what the deal is. Nineteen years old. Mm. I know I wouldn't have been able to do it uh, right away as good as some of these girls can do it. Uh, they they get in there and they just seem to know what that their job is to please the guy and and ultimately by pleasing the guy it makes for a better scene. And which is more entertaining to the customer, uh, the the cash paying customers at home that are buying this stuff. Or like I always say, like you, that's, you're, that's you're, yeah, who the arbitrator is. Or like I was saying, like you're going to go on a show, you're going to work with somebody, look at what they've done, like so you have an idea. Like we have people come on the show years ago that were just not, they they, they didn't like the interview, they 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 were just not happy with it, yeah. and it's like you could have listened right. to anything we've done. We have shows everywhere, we have links everywhere, but yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. So you know, you know, your job is to entertain the audience otherwise nobody's going to be listening to you right <laughs> and you're going to be out of a job and yeah. you know uh, yeah. back to what you're doing before yeah. <laughs> i happen to enjoy my job i like to rise to the occasion rise to the challenge i like to um uh, uh, pride myself on keeping my cool and explaining things and it's difficult you know when you're trying to you know maintain you're cool and you're not getting the cooperation that you'd hope, you know, you're not, the gears aren't meshing, you know, you're not in sync. And when you're not in sync, it, it can be a difficult day, but you get through it and, uh, and you never quit and uh, you just don't quit no matter what. Um, and I'm proud to say that over the years, uh, uh, the thousands of scenes that I've done, uh, we've only had a call at quits um, less than uh, uh, three or four times. I can't remember specifically, but it's about three or four. Oh. And uh, it, we, it just didn't work out. So that's not yeah. that's not bad batting average. No, no, not at all. I was going to ask you. Oh, yeah. So, sorry, Max. I was going to ask, what do you do for fun when you're not working? What do you do to just kick back? Oh, I do a, I do a lot of things. I, I, I like to build things. I like to fabricate and make things. But cool. pure fun and enjoyment. I love going to see big sporting events, and I, I love big concerts and uh, the big shows where they really – put the money into uh into lighting and to presentation and um and to really make it um and they know what their job is they're there to entertain i saw the scorpions not long ago and and they, they, these guys just blew me away uh you know and good good performers will do that yeah and uh uh i i also um, yeah, play the guitar and and do a little singing, but uh, mainly I'm good at the guitar, and so it, it means uh, it means a lot to me. I, I really enjoy uh, a good concert or a good uh, show. Going down to see the Lakers, Dodgers, uh, soccer, you know, uh, a anything is it's fun. It's it's just it's great to be around with your friends, you know, and. And you know you're not going to be around forever, so you might as well have a good time while you while you're here. True, and, and doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, are things picking up again, like uh, out there with with sporting events and uh, concerts and all? I feel like stuff's starting to reopen. Yes, yeah, it's starting to it's starting to open up. Uh, the the we've graduated now. You can go to a sporting event and uh, Dodgers game, and if you have a uh, vaccination card that they give you uh, when you're done with it as uh, you can sit without a mask. Yes. Uh, you can you can go into a restaurant now without masks. Oh, it's been cool. a long, cold winter, I'll tell you that, oh, yeah. uh, for a lot of people. And, um, and 
thankfully it's it's loosening its grip and i knew it would uh it has to you know we have to get through this uh but it's been tough for everybody and yeah. uh my sympathies yeah uh, i was just gonna say i was gonna ask too if that affected the the adult film industry uh with... oh yeah i i i uh, there were some people still shooting but i i pretty much shut down i just shot a few times over the last year because uh, I was concerned about it. And also, we had uh, uh, accepted rules that you would have to be tested within 48 hours of a, uh, of a scene. And it was, it was difficult for me, where I am, to get to the clinic and back and to get my results on time. And so um, it, it, it was... It, it became difficult, and also I was naturally I was concerned about my my own health and the health of uh, my fellow performers. You know, we've got uh, uh, and, and crew, of course, uh, we've yeah. got you know f- five or six or seven people on set uh, at any given time, and uh, you don't know where everybody is, and it's it's, it's tough. Uh, but it's been a lot, uh, that being said, it's a lot tougher in uh, many other places. So I don't mean to to come across like we had it very bad. I think we, you know, we got through this pretty well. Um, and uh, there's a lot of cu- countries now. I've got friends in Brazil that are, it's just, it's, really really bad over there and yeah. and i feel very sorry for them and uh and hopefully we can get beyond this and um uh, and and uh and move forward and i look forward to shooting uh more uh and having a great fun because every everyone is is di- every girl is different every girl is special and and uh, you know we have to find that uh, that mutual uh, uh, level of respect where we're both pushing hard, and I'm uh, making it good for her, and she's making it easy for me. And uh, in that case, uh, we have a great, great days, and I've had many good days and great days, many, many more than I uh, could possibly have hoped for. That's awesome. That's awesome. Max, were you going to ask something? Yeah, I was actually curious. um, Earlier when Rob had asked to um, when the girls, like, do they quit often? And you had said that when the work dries up. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Uh, Right. So uh, there's there's a constant uh, demand for for new talent. You know, people want to see... It's like um, they want to see the next big thing, the next singer, the next dancer, you know, the next performer on TV. Do you get your favorites? Some girls last a long time. Um, But most, they come in, and it's kind of a mutual thing. The, The phone stops ringing as much because everybody in town has shot them out. The they have an expression, you're shot out. Uh, And there's only a few cities here in America that shoot. There's, there's LA, of course, and there's Las Vegas, and then there's Miami area, generally speaking, you know, uh, these areas, not specifically the cities. And then, then you can always go over to Prague or Budapest to shoot as well. Um, those are the two big cities over in Europe. Uh, in Barcelona is coming on strong as well. Uh, but they, they, it's 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 a two way street. They get shot by everybody who's going to shoot them. Usually, if they're good, they'll shoot many times. And a lot of girls. I mean, we're talking a lot of work here. We're talking about buying a home, uh, you know, with uh, with cash. Uh, uh, it's amazing how much money these a good girl can make, but also uh, the on the girls' uh, 
from the girls' perspective, they get, I think some of them just get bored with it. And, okay, I've done it. I've made my money. I can go to school. I can do this. I can do that. I have my car. I have my home. And then they move on. And uh, that's what I was implying when uh, – you have a limited life lifespan over here. Everybody does. It's the like guys an naturally hang on longer, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's all about the girls. Gotcha. Max, we have to wrap this up, dude. It's been such a, a great time talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Anytime. Absolutely. Where can everybody find you? They can, uh, yeah, thanks for asking and reminding me. Uh, my main website is max-hardcore.com, and that's the only official one. And on Twitter, I'm at maxhardcore100. Awesome, Max. Uh, when the show goes up and all, I will send you all the links to, to the interview, to the thanks. to the show. Thanks very much. It was really uh, been an honor uh to be on your show, I wish you guys the best because uh, you certainly deserve it. You're doing a, uh, a a good service for not only the community, but when I say that, I mean the whole uh, the the whole country. Uh, you know, the whole world really, is, honestly, is listening to you, and uh, and I'm very very proud to be on your show. Thank you, my friend. You. Take care, Max. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Take care. Have a good one.